So last week's episode of Fruit Talk was about my perspective, a reality check, my plans to do some downsizing of my fig collection this fall. And a lot of you guys commented on that video. I was very, I was quite surprised because I usually don't get that many comments on my uh, Fruit Talk episodes. Um, clearly, uh, through reading all the comments, a lot of you guys really just didn't understand what I was trying to get across. And I guess that's my own fault. You know, I'm not, I'm not blaming you guys or anything, but I wanted to clarify some things because what everybody is saying in the comments, is just, it wasn't really accurate to what I was really feeling. And maybe I came off quite discouraged in that video or, or quite negative in that video, but don't get me wrong. There is some extreme value in collecting fig varieties. And I have, um, as I said in that episode last week, that I have benefited greatly from collecting varieties. I have found a handful of varieties that are exceptional here that I otherwise would not have if I had not done research and had not uh, gone on a, on a limb and tried these different varieties and uh, tried to figure out what would do well here and, and really carefully observe them over years now, I wouldn't have benefited at all. So there is some good benefit and I highly recommend that you guys do this. However, this I guess could really sum it up is that I have superior varieties to the varieties that I'm growing. I'm trialing all these different varieties that I'm losing patience for. If they're not showing the characteristics in which I know are going to be solid here and superior to other characteristics, then they're gone, <laughs> right? I know a lot of you guys loved when I said that last in the last episode, but it's it's true. I mean, it's not a shot against, it's not a negative thing towards anything I've done or anything I'm doing right now or anything you guys are doing. It's just that for me, it doesn't make sense. So now realizing that in this stage of my collecting, right, everybody's in a different stage. You know, some of you guys are just starting. Some of you guys have been in this for a couple of years now. You know, in the beginning, you get really excited. You want to try all these different varieties. Then you kind of realize after a couple of years that some of them are very similar to the others. Then you realize, oh, well, maybe I should probably try all these different varieties to try to find something a bit more unique. Then eventually you find some unique varieties. Then you find something that ends up working out really well in your climate. And you then start to refine that further. Well, what, what is working for you? Uh, what are the superior varieties, right? I have the standards. I have Celeste. I have Hardy Chicago. I have Violet de Bordeaux, even Smith, you could say, is a standard. Can I beat those four figs in any way? Is there a variety that beats them? If there is, and I have all these other varieties that really don't even come close to the standards, why am I keeping them? Um, well, originally it could be for the flavor, right? You want to try all these amazing varieties. You want to be like, oh, Here's a black Madeira. Here's a Col de Dom, right? What does that taste like? Is it really live up to the hype that everybody keeps saying and and uh, and you know is really bragging about it? You know, so there's that. But at the same time, I've tasted all of them. I've had pretty much you know every flavor group you can think of, and then some. Um, you know, to me, I'm not nearly as impressed by something that's a five and a f five out of five because really the difference between a five out of five and a 4.5 out of five is pretty much nothing. It's really, it's really so small. Even between a four out of five and a five out of five is still pretty small, you know? So if I rate a fig at a four out of five and it performs really well, um, but my five out of five, like Black Madeira as an example, 
is a five out of five. It's one of the best tasting figs I have, but it doesn't perform well. Then I'm going to actually keep the four out of five because I would rather eat more figs personally. Um, I would rather have more figs at the highest quality possible, right? I don't want less figs at the most highest quality possible. I want more figs at the highest quality possible, right? So therefore, Black Madeira has just got to go for me in this climate. So it's not like I'm uh, discouraged. It's just a realization that when you have a lot of rain and you have a lot of bad weather, that you then suddenly realize, oh, you know, that's the variety I should be growing. And that's the variety I shouldn't be growing. You know, um, you can clearly see when you get a couple of days of rain and you have a number of varieties ripening at the same time, which ones are superior and which ones aren't, you know, so it's the same thing with you guys. You know, there's going to be some weather event or something that happens and you're going to suddenly realize, oh, and this is something that happens for me every year. You know, this year we had a big event in August. Prior years, I've had them normally around September. We've had, you know, uh, two years ago around September 5th, we had rain for like five days straight. A couple years prior to that, I had rain for like five days straight. If you get a lot of rain at one time, I mean, it just it just ruins everything, and you 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 kind of understand. You just get a better understanding. But there are some varieties in that five day of rain that believe it or not can somehow hold on and you're just like whoa okay well there's the realization right there's the uh there's the answer so that's what i'm trying to get at and i want to go through these comments here because a lot of you guys i guess just didn't get the you know really the the full understanding what this person said you know when you have a lot of passion and you have those, you know, what am I doing moments? Um, it's best not to make decisions um, during emotional times because you can be cloudy and distorted. If anything, it's the opposite. I wasn't emotional. It was using a lot of logic to come to the conclusions of, hey, I need to get rid of these varieties because, yeah, they have a big name. Yeah, they might sell for a lot of money. Yeah, I might have some emotional attachment to the trees, which I don't. I don't really personally understand that at all. There is no emotional attachment to any of these varieties that I have. If you produce good fruit, you produce good fruit, and that's it. That's all I that's all I care about. I care about the fruit, not the tree. So, you know, there was there really is no emotion in this whole thing. If anything, a lot of you guys hold on to your varieties because of your emotions. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there in relationships, in marriages that uh, don't have the guts to move on. You know, they're just in a relationship for an extended period of time and they shouldn't be and they both know it. And uh, I think it takes more, it takes a lot of guts, but it also takes a lot of logic and um and, you know, a clear mind to actually be able to make that decision to move on. So for me, if anything, I think that's, you know, that was the total opposite of what I was thinking, at least. Um, so someone said, uh, chop them up and sell them for cuttings in other locations. Yeah, that's, of course, what I'm going to do. Any tree that I'm going to get rid of is that I'm going to take cuttings, which we take in December, and and um, we sell them in December and sell them in January. So if you're interested, you just got to pay attention to my social media or even the, my videos here on, on uh, YouTube because we sell them on Figbit. So everything's sold there. You don't have to message me personally, individually. Everything will be listed there. I'm going to have so many cuttings this year, by the way, that it's going to be insane. I, I don't really know. It's so much work, if you can believe. It really is a lot of work. Uh, cutting down as many trees that I have in the ground now and then also, um, you know, putting them uh, um, in those bags, labeling the bags, sorting them, getting them into packages. The whole thing is just like wild. But 
The point is, I don't. I'm not complaining or anything, but the point is, is that uh, we're gonna have a ton of cuttings, so there's not really any w reason to worry for that. And also, whatever I get rid of that's in a pot, I can bare root it, and I'm gonna ship those out in November. So for me, um, personally. You know, just because it doesn't work for me here doesn't mean it's not going to work for you there. So I, as I said in that video, I really do value the unknowns. I value the figs that are down the street, the seedlings in California. You know, I, I like preserving. I think there's value in preserving these varieties. So for me to get rid of it, unless I think it's horrible, which there are some figs that I have come across in my years now that I have just refused to sell because they're that bad. If they're that bad, I don't even sell them. I don't even bother because I don't think any way you should be growing them. I don't see any good use of them out of them. But, you know, there is some genetics there and maybe it is worth saving for some particular reason. But, you know, at some point you got to pass on certain varieties. So I'm not going to sell anything that I don't think can do well in some particular location. But, um, yeah, of course, we're going to we're going to chop these guys up, even sell the, the, um, the trees themselves bare root. Um, in terms of the top performers list that I was mentioning as well in that video is that we already have a top performers list. I'm going to finalize this as I mentioned, but you know, black Madeira is definitely off this list now. Uh, Dels Ermatons and De La Senora Hivernenka, these are the two that will be here for the foreseeable future, right? Can I find something in the future that will replace these? I don't know. But these are now the new standards for the very late variety list. Um, also, these late varieties, they're pretty darn standard as well. And, you know, a lot of people are now coming into the opinion that White Madeira number one is supposed to be better than Strawberry Verte. Prior, I would have thought Strawberry Verte was the best until I try some White Madeira number one in the next couple weeks. I won't really know for sure. Uh, Blanche to do Cezanne, also really a big fan of that fig. I don't necessarily know how close that even compares to White Madeira. Some people um, describe White Madeira in a similar way to Blanche to do Cezanne. Additionally, in this particular, even the even the cold adams at some point could potentially lose out because De La Roca is such a superior cold adam that I don't necessarily think it's even worth having some of the cold adams if you can get the De La Roca, you know. So at some point, I would imagine maybe even some of the cold adams, maybe not all of them, will eventually be off of this list as well. I don't know because there's so many cold knobs. I'm growing so many different types. You really need to have them for a number of years. But I'll tell you, you know, you can't lose out with like something like uh, De La Roca. You can't lose out with these two. You know, probably could add White Madeira number one to that list, assuming I get more experience with it. Also in the mid-season category here, you've got things like Black Greek, Borgia Soak Grease, Socorro Black, Violet Sapor. These are all probably the same fig. As long as you just get one of them, one of those four, I think that's a solid, solid choice. So they're uh, undoubtedly one of the best varieties that you can grow. So I'll, I'll, I'll highlight all of those. Also huge fan of Neruccio de Elba, Smith, Sucret, Verdino del Nord, and Zafiro. These are extremely, extremely good varieties um, for this climate. Now in the very early category here, I would recommend Campaneri, Black Celeste, Blue Celeste, Azores Dark, uh, LSU Tiger, Malta Black, Moro de Caneva, um, LSU Huye and Albo, you could pretty much say that together they're extremely good. I think one of them is going to be superior to the other, but for now I have to. These other three I'm not totally sold on, which is quite strange because a lot of you guys would know that, you know, Ronde Bordeaux, Long Dedute, 
Violette de Bordeaux. I mean, these are classic standard varieties that you can grow in this climate. Um, they're right up there with Celeste and Hardy Chicago types. Pastelier, I have a number of different strains of Pastelier from many different sources, from many different places. And these, in all honesty, um, some of them are better than others. And I'm going to find one I know that is going to be able to compete with the rest of these figs I highlighted in red. But for now, I'm not too confident on which strain exactly that is just yet. And then I have literally so many other figs in this list over here on the side that you know, you really could, even that's not even on this list, that are just in my fig list here, that believe it or not could break up, break into this. There's actually, you know, out of the varieties here that I could remove as an example, I'm not going to, even though I didn't highlight these here, they're not getting removed anytime soon. Um, the only one I really could remove immediately is probably Black Madeira, you know. Maybe I could get away with removing... You know, one of these two here, White Triana, Violet de Bordeaux by the end of this year, maybe Long to Do. You know, if I was going to get rid of, if these are these guys here are pretty much at the bottom of my list for various different reasons. Hate of the Argentile, I'm just not a big fan of the flavor of that cherry flavor. I don't necessarily like that cherry flavor that's in figs. However, it's extremely unique, and I know a lot of people who love that fig. Uh, the Dalloso Belfiore is a great fig, but I need more experience with it. Um, the Violet de Bordeaux um, gets some mold. The White Triana has a very long hang time, and the longer these figs hang on the tree, the more that something can happen to them. Long de Dute is a great fig as well, but um, it's just not as tasty as some of these other varieties on this this category so for me you know there's a lot going on in here and there's still a lot that needs to be proven or learned or disproven even um, to really be able to say that these are my absolute absolute favorites however every fig I have in red is gonna be in my collection for probably a very very long time I it would be very difficult to get rid of these guys in red um, and that is going to be the difficult decision. Getting rid of these other ones, you know, like Black Madeira is a joke. It's, it's like, an, it's an easy decision. Logically, I don't even have to keep track of different things, right? I was keeping track of a lot of data. Uh, if you look here at my spreadsheet, we kept track of things like vigor and when the main crop ripened and the hang time, standout traits, all these different categories here. I was keeping track of but some of these are just it's obvious I don't have to keep track of that to really understand um, the big differences between the two you know uh, between one fig and the other fig you know so from here maybe the way the best way to do this is to eliminate whatever tastes similar you know like Moro de Caneva tastes very similar to Villa de Bordeaux and I like more of the Caneva better, so therefore it it beats it out, you know. Um, you know, it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be that basically. Like, which one of them, Albo and LSU Huye, is better? Because they definitely do taste quite similar. Which of the Socorro Black, the Violet Sapor, the Borgeso Gris, you know, which of those are gonna taste better or perform better in some way? So in terms of uh, getting unknowns from people and going to their houses and things, I have no problem talking to strangers. <laughs> it's just that when you have such superior genetics, I'm not really inclined as much. When I've been doing this for so many years, maybe when I first started, I have not been nearly as inclined, motivated to go out and talk to a stranger and say, hey, I don't know who you are. Also, there's this coronavirus thing going on, but you know, let me see your fig tree. You know, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily as inclined and I'm sure that whoever they are, first off, we could probably relate very easily, right? They're probably going to be someone who's Italian or of an origin 
similar to mine, a similar kind of people that enjoys food, that enjoys figs. I mean, we have a lot in common right there. So um, not in any sense afraid or unwilling to talk to these people, but um, it's just not something that I'm necessarily motivated to do right now. Um, <laughs> let's see, what else we got here? Uh, so this... Just to reiterate, if you wanted to buy any of my varieties, guys, they're going to be on Figbit. That's just what it is. Um, in terms of these high-priced varieties not being that great, as Mr. Green here has said, there is some truth to that, and there's also not some truth to that. It depends on who it is that's you know saying they're good. You know, it's like anything in life where you get your information from is extremely important. You know, there's so much information out there nowadays that you don't know who to necessarily listen to. You don't know who to trust because there's a lot of it's conflicting. A lot of it's misleading, purposely misleading. So for me, I, um, I, I think I do a really good job at this point of telling you guys what would be a great fig in a particular location. So, I can obviously tell you what we do well here, but you know it takes some years and some time to really figure out from other growers what is going to do well in some other part of the country, and you know that may be where I, I slightly mislead people. But whatever does well here, whatever these figs that I just listed and read, I mean these are the figs that I'm going to keep. These are the figs I'm going to grow. These are the figs that I want to spread around to the community. You know. After doing all this research and all this trialing, all this time, this is what I want to share with you guys. So uh, it's just a big deal, I think, um, to get your information from the right place. If you're going to listen to somebody who mostly just sells and that's all they do, they really don't have any taste buds to speak of, then maybe you don't want to listen to that person. You know? Um, it also largely depends on yourself too. Um, just because a fig is selling at a high price doesn't mean it's going to be good. Doesn't mean it's going to be tasty. Nor does it mean it's going to perform well. So you got to really get an eye for this kind of thing. You know, trial a bunch of the really good standard common varieties that are cheap and affordable. That's always what I've recommended to you guys from the beginning. In the beginning of this, you got to try the standards. Go with what is proven, and then from there branch out. Don't be the guy that's going to be in reinventing the wheel from the beginning. You're just going to end up wasting a lot of money. You're probably going to learn a lot quicker, but you know, is that your goal? I don't know. Um, I would say the majority of the very expensive figs are just not that good. Um, you know, I basically, through promoting Smith as much as I have over the years, it's become an expensive fig. Um, but that's because it, it should be an expensive fig. It really should deserve a higher price like Black Madeira does. I mean, Black Madeira, like, like I've been saying, it's a very, very good fig. It just doesn't perform well here. So a lot of times, I would say more times than not, the expensive variety isn't going to perform well, but the expensive variety most likely, although not always, eh, maybe like 50% of the time is going to actually taste good. So, you know, there that's my little piece on the whole thing. You can believe whatever you want, but it's sort of true and it's sort of not true. You know, not all the high price varieties stink and not all the um you know not all of them are uh or good or bad basically um haven't tried with hydrogen peroxide i don't want to be eating that stuff you know i i don't know it sounds like a good idea though in all honesty it sounds quite interesting um let's see here yeah i would like to live in california <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, no help to family heirloom fig in Chicago, Illinois. 
100 year old variety coming from northern italy yeah there's obviously some good benefit to that you know don't get me wrong a comment because i've been getting messages about these plastic bags they really do help um quite a bit if you can 100 percent control the moisture in the soil that's a really big bonus people don't really understand that um it's a shame but it is insanely beneficial the only th reason i'm not doing it this year is that the mosquitoes it creates a habitat for those mosquitoes it's really bad um this person says sorry to hear that you have an amazing collection yeah just, don't be sorry you know i'm just um this is just a natural process right i didn't go into this thinking i'm gonna have all these varieties forever i thought Maybe in the beginning, I thought, well, it would be nice to have about 100 varieties of figs, right? And then I ended up getting more than that. Then I ended up getting more than that. And then I was like, well, having all these varieties of figs, I would rather just have copies of the figs that I like a lot and do well a lot. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily make sense to keep a hundred varieties of, of figs. Why not just have, let's say five or 10 varieties. You know, I've been saying that for years now, guys, that's nothing new. Um, yeah. And again, there's no, there's no real sorrow. The only sorrow I had in that video was the fact that it was just raining a lot. You know, that if it's raining a lot, I don't have the fruit quality I want. Um, and I do eventually, you know, I do subscribe to the idea. Maybe, I mean, every collector inevitably ends up downsizing to some degree. So, you know, maybe I'm a bit more extreme than others, but, you know, I would say like three or four years ago, I had the idea of downsizing to five, 10, 20 varieties. You know, I've been talking about this for years now. Uh, that it would be a really good idea would be to, uh, knock on people's doors and ask them for uh, their figs and make a video out of it. Um, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, people keep saying that uh, don't make a decision when you're discouraged. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I'm not discouraged. <laughs> Plus, the only decision I'm going to make is um, is in the fall. You know, this list here and my entire coal list is not going to be really determined until November. Um, and th this person here, I thought, brought up a really interesting point. Uh, this year, Ross, every year will be different. So you need at least four to six different varieties to cover hot years, cold years, dry years, and wet years. Well, for me, I don't think that's really that great of an idea either because what you should be doing here in this climate, maybe not all climates, but here in this climate, I would rather just prepare for the worst every year and those are the varieties I have. Why would I grow a variety specifically for a good year only? You know, Black Madeira is a good year only fig <laughs> in this climate. So you're saying one out of every five years that we have a good year, I'm gonna get to enjoy my Black Madeira? You know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Um, even Italian 258, I'm gonna be getting rid of. This person was saying, aren't you gonna at least keep one tree of each? Actually, uh, believe it or not, I am. But that's only due to ex for experimental purposes. I'm keeping one tree of Italian 258, one tree of Black Madeira, because I want to see how well they perform in the ground, and that's it. Um, but inevitably, they'll they'll be gone. I mean, it's not like and the the potted trees I have are going to be gone this year. They're gone. <laughs> um.
This person mentioned eliminating redundancy and overlapping genetically similar varieties. And um, I did that. Been doing that for years. So I think a lot of these questions, a lot of these, you know, responses are, um, maybe it's not necessarily that you guys are not understanding my point of view, but maybe it's actually really you guys trying to further understand my view, you know? Um, so maybe we didn't need this episode at all. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys are like, Ross, <laughs> I understood you the first time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think a lot of you guys thought I was very discouraged with, if anything, I'm actually excited because um, I found these superior varieties and I'm looking forward to having more trees of those particular varieties. Um, so, you know, it just is what it is. Um, it's something you got to go through when you're doing this kind of thing. And that's it. You know, um, my friend Vinny uh, had messaged me about this fig here, which is Paradiso Bode. And his had died and uh, he saw how good mine was. So he was like, he was like, Ross, <laughs> you got to send me that that variety and I was like all right well listen Vin it's good it's a five out of five it's as good as black Madeira in my mind um but it splits a lot like every fig I've gotten off the tree this year has split so why would I keep it why would you keep it because he also lives in a pretty humid place so it just uh, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense for either one of us, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just it just goes to show, I guess, in a way, how some people are are driven by this is the flavor and having that nice experience of eating, you know, something like that. I think there's obviously value to it, but it gets old at a certain point, you know. Unless I taste something that's new, that's incredible, that really gives me that awesome experience, then what's you know necessarily the point? Um, it's just, it's just, it's not there for me. So yeah, I think that really cleared it up for you guys. Um, I think I gave you guys some good information here, especially with the top performing varieties. Um, you know, if I had to choose one for anyone out there in the country, it would be Hardy Chicago. Just find yourself a Hardy Chicago fig, get that one variety. I personally like Malta Black, Azores Dark. There are others I'm growing now too to see if they're any good, like Kesariani and Norella and Red Lebanese, Baca, um, Black Greek from Marius, um, Novids, Unknown Dark Greek, um, Hardy Hobokins, another one. You know, there's a number of these. Hardy Chicago types flying around. Even St. Rita is probably a good one that people love. If you get any of those, even just straight up Hardy Chicago, it's going to be good. You know, um, you don't got to worry. And that's probably, in my mind, the best fig if you're just going to choose one because it's going to do well everywhere. Um, it's going to be early, rain resistant, split resistant, spoil. It's not going to spoil on you in a warm place. They produce a lot of fruit and the quality is, is of the highest. So... Uh, anyway, guys, thank you here so much for watching this one. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Um, consider, if you guys are interested, you like the podcast, rate us on uh, iTunes. Leave a comment or a review on the channel. Um, hit the subscribe button on our channel. And consider supporting the podcast on patreon.com slash Ross Ratty. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.